Hello, welcome back to this video and today we're going to see headbutts yay or nay and the answer is it depends. So it really depends on many things among other things if you are in the proper range obviously unless you're Zinedine Zidane and if you don't know who he is just you can google the idea is for you to be closer first before you actually attempt to do any attack with your head. Second is you need to clear the center obviously if there's something going on here it's not going to be a good attack it's not going to be as efficient as an attack than if this was not there so you have to have those conditions again shorter range and being able to take care of those uh, hands so the ideal attacks again are the ones in which you can clear that first and then you're shorter range which means that you're either in the clinch which is one possibility you're here rather than looking for an elbow which you can you can already headbutt the other person and that would be ideal i would definitely think about one hand clinch and the other one taking care of the other hand better than the double hand because the person can still uh, punch you obviously that's one possibility but also you can punch you around and going towards your face which makes or might make it more, more difficult but even better that allows you the person to cover themselves trying to free the pressure and if that's the case i will not be able to headbutt efficiently one more thing that I was going to say is make sure that you hit always with the top part of your forehead, well, between the forehead and the top part of your head, uh, and not with any other side of your body because it's going to be very difficult for you to compensate uh, the damage that you might uh, incur on your own brain. Now, also, when you train, if you are training, just train the motions. Don't train with resistance. Unless you're fighting for real, and then meaning you're, you're doing that for a living, uh, and you do things like lithway, for example, in which they are incorporated like Muay Thai, but with headbutts. Um, I would not recommend anybody to train this because obviously the damage that you are going to incur on your brain is so much higher or the risk that it's, there's no outside of training that. So again, no resistance. The only thing that you can train is your motion. Now, you can go forward. You can go within an angle. Uh, again, depending on the side you're going to be going for. You can go also high. You can go down. So what is the use of each? So well, it mainly depends on the height differences, right? Like, for example, if I'm here and I'm clearing, since I'm much taller in this case than chin, in this case, I can just hit downwards. That actually makes more sense. But I can also choose to do this and lower my body weight because that lowering of my body weight can take care of the hands at the same time. And since I'm here, I'm going to attack towards the back of the person. I can also go as low as if I'm trying to attack the legs. Let's say that I fake... Uh, takedown and I went downwards, the other person is going to lower the hands, I can take advantage of that, clearing that hands and going now upwards like this. So again, here, now, uh, slap downwards and going high for your uh, headbutt. And those are just within the same plane. All I've done is changing from top to bottom, which is a 45 degrees down, to straight towards the back to 45 degrees up. Um, but I can also go, as I said before, sideways. Like, for example, when I move out of a punch like this, and now I clear that side and I can enter from the side straight towards the face. One and two. Important, every time you do this headbutt, you're going to turn with your body, but you're going to still hit with the same portion of your head. So make sure that when you do, you twist with your body, you're still aligned with your entire body, and don't... Um, disengage your neck from the rest of the body meaning don't do this when you're head batting because that's actually going to first put a lot of pressure on your uh, cervicals but second of all even if you manage to hit the other person every resistance that you have again is going to go to the cervical spine and you're not going to have the same amount of power meaning you cannot add any more power than that so what you're going to do instead of just turning keep your body tight and then you're going to enter by pushing with the back foot that's what's going to add power uh, to your headbutts. So as you can see, there are many ways in which you can incorporate headbutts. But the favorite ones, or my favorite ones, is when you actually do a follow-up first. And this is, excuse me, this is actually a follow-up of something that you have done first. Like for example, you have punch or you have elbow. Let's say that I went here, boom, elbow towards the side and enter with a headbutt. It's a very simple combination because when you have managed to punch the other person, when you have managed to even slapping, let's say that you go like this and then you can enter right away, the other person is going to be distracted by your strike and is going to move the head in one direction. Particularly things like, for example, let's say that I went this way the inside, in this case on the outside of the other person, and I attack 
with a big hook. The person's gonna turn the head. Look at what happens. Now you're ready to attack the face right away. And you can actually surprise the person by doing this and attack the person's head right away. That is a possibility. So again, should you use it? The answer is it depends. The only things that I would say is it's useful for when you are in shorter range, when you have taken care of the hands, in particular when you do it after or as a follow-up to something else that you have done before, particularly when you strike the person's face and the person's moving in one direction. So as usual, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching this video and I see you in the next one.